I continue to watch people make bad choices with their lives. Destiny damaging choices, even Christians. And yet they are surprised why certain outcomes continue to recycle. Do you know there are people today, in all honesty, this year was like last year. Regardless what prophetic word came, because no prophetic word will veto your ability to choose. Prophetic words are announced so that you will know what God wants to do. Then align your decisions and your choices. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass. It's in your Bible. If thou shalt hearken. Why would God be explaining it to men? I thought he's all powerful. If you want to bless, bless God. If you want to curse, curse God. If you want to move it, Israel out of Egypt, move them. You are almighty. Why does God seem helpless when he's talking with men? Because he gave man one ability that makes man like him. The power to choose. Jesus had the power to say, God, plans have changed. I will not die for any man. These people are crazy. They are coming to die for them and they are not grateful. And God would have respected his choice. I hope you know that. The Bible says he was tempted in every way. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. He said, I have the power to call a legion of angels. Many of us right now, the Lord gave me this message to the body of Christ. The decisions that you are making, you can pray and make wrong choices. Your wrong choices will veto your prayer. If God wants to help you, he will send you mercy. Another person will come and influence your mind. Can I tell you, your choices will influence you more than your prayer life. Hear what I'm teaching you. Your choices will influence the outcome of your life and destiny more than your prayer life. It is the reason why there is a lot of prayer with all due respect that happens in the body of Christ. And yet you do not see people making constructive destiny advancement. Because many believers just pray as a ritual. But they do not purify their decisions to make word compliant pro-destiny decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will still be poor because of their decisions. There are people till the next 10 years they will never build a house. With all due respect, there are pastors and leaders for the next 10 years they will never rise. And don't say it does not matter. There are individuals whose lives will never make any notable kingdom impact because of decisions. Decisions. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. You've heard me say it here in Koinonia. If you come from a poor family, don't let a poor family come out of you. If you come from a family of witchcraft, don't let witchcraft come out of you. If you were raised with all due respect by irresponsible parents, don't waste the time arguing and hating them. And then you wake up and see children all around you and they call you daddy. You are almost tempted to say you are not my children. But time has gone. Many of you right now, you are wasting time in anger. You are wasting time in bitterness. Anger and bitterness does not lead you to your desired heaven. The day you settle down and choose. Apostle, I was raped when I was small. I sympathize with you. I don't downplay your pain. But if you stay there complaining, you will get to 40 years, 50 years and not make any quality decision. Apostle, I, I hate my parents because when other people were going to school, they were there around dancing around masquerades and the result now is all of us are poor what are you doing about it they have run their own course can i tell you in my world i have taught you koinonia in my world an adult is not 18 years i respect that statistics but it's a deception to many people there are many many adults calling themselves children in my world the moment you can decide 
and you have an awareness of the consequences, you become an adult immediately. How soon? Immediately. Let's stop pampering people to produce destructive destinies. You see someone 35 years, 40 years, and he says, I'm a last one. What does that mean? Of course, I'm not being sarcastic. Yes, thank God that you're so... Destiny does not care, ladies and gentlemen. The one who decides, if it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. The one who chose to walk out on water was the one who experienced that miracle. Hallelujah. Our world is full of commentators who never make choices and decide. They comment about those making strategic impact and they cannot jump out of that water. Our business people, I'm ashamed of them. Something as easy as this and they will never do it. Preachers who are talking like ah, that scripture is not really correct and yet they will never do anything impactful. The world does not reward commentators. It is those who get up and, and do something with their lives. Are we together? There are many people who insulted fathers, insulted mothers, parents now. Now is their turn. Their children are suffering worse conditions now. If your father and your mother with all due respect lived a mediocre life, the first way out is to find another father and mother who reflects what you want to become. I told you that the principles of followership is twofold. Number one, follow them. Number two, looking on to Jesus. This is how we become in the kingdom. Follow them is the first principle of followership. There are some them that represent where you are going. Do you know why God creates, puts leaders in front of you? Those leaders are an attempt to model your future. That where you want to go to. So leaders are a personification of outcomes. A personification of decisions. So that you can see the outcome in the life of others. Seeing somebody fail and then you go and fail again. You are the one who is twice as unwise. Because they already failed for you. The beauty of leadership is an opportunity to see the scars of people. They will show you their scars that I made this decision. And this is the consequence. Now I am teaching you to save you the 20 years I wasted in my own life, a leader will say. And yet many people will not respect it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that do not only respect crowns, respect scars. Because both crowns and scars are teachers. Any man you see wearing a crown, look very well. Beyond the regalia, look at his hands, you will see a scar. A scar, a testament of wrong decisions, a testament of endurance, sometimes a testament of right decisions. Is someone learning? Ask, bring sample 10 young believers. Someone who would tell you, I'm going to be a great man of God and ask him, what are you doing now? He will tell you, well, uh, once in a while I listen to some messages if I have the time to. And then I just know what I'm focused on writing what God told me. My dear minister in the making, you will never arrive there by that behavior. No. No. There are many like you who wished ministry. Unfortunately, it does not happen by wishing. The Bible says, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Walk it out. Hallelujah. There are many gentlemen right now. They cannot tell me the last time they read a book. A quality pro-destiny book. Many gentlemen cannot tell the last time they opened themselves to receive quality strategic mentorship. Receiving mentorship at your terms is a joke. You will never amount to anything. It's like a teacher, a student telling the teacher, I'm not ready to learn now. Just be patient. Allow me rest. When I'm ready, I will call you. Teacher says, nonsense. <laughs> are we together? How many people are poor and broke today, but will never respect the wisdom that comes from people who have been helped by God? No. Hallelujah. You want to become a great mother. 
and you see a woman who is exceptional with her home and her children and you disrespect them do you know every time i see great people i look past their result i want to buy into their mindset because their results are consequences did you hear that their results are consequences there are decisions that led there and i want to hear it what is your understanding like what are your decision making processes like man of god what decisions have you made that brought such power such grace such influence to your life let me sing that song again for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord now let me tell you this I came from an evangelical background and being that my whole training and my exposure in ministry was from the northern middle belt and context you know we got that foundation of character moral excellence but there were certain things about administrative excellence that I did not have the opportunity to see because of the background as God began to expose me to a global audience I knew that there were some things I did not get by the advantage of my background and that I will have to reinvent myself and so back to the formula of followership follow them looking on to Jesus there are things that them cannot teach you because the them to our students is just that they have gone ahead are we together and I began to learn administrative principles these are things that you do not get just by impartation. No, you get by knowledge. Serious, constructive, definite knowledge. And I started getting the materials, opening up myself to the various trainings in addition to being a man of God to become an effective leader. Leader of resources, leader of people. You see that now? You want God to trust you to manage his resources and all you have is a sincere heart that is good but that is not enough no the dynamics of managing resources resources there being both human and material resources this one is a learned skill it comes by training it's not just a gift hallelujah there are many believers who are trusting God for increase and promotion you want to pastor hundred members there is a skill to pastor hundred members you want to pastor a thousand members with the mentality of the one who pastors a hundred members? No. God loves his sheep too much. He will not trust you with that kind of thing. There is something you need to know. The dynamics of conflict resolution. The dynamics of people management. There are several things you need to learn at an elevated state. In addition to prayer, fasting, and the ministry of the word. Decisions. What is the difference between someone who is running a big shopping mall and another person who is struggling with a small shop? It's not just exposure, it's their decisions. The person small there is either starting small or he has refused to grow. Refusal to grow is a decision and God and life can respect it. But the consequences that come with stuntedness will also meet you there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're still going to spend a few minutes praying, just asking the Lord to send a fresh rain. In every season, you don't depend on last year's rain for this year's harvest. Every season has rain that comes. It rained last year, but we still need rain this year. If at all we must plant you're going to pray pray in the spirit passionately and desperately father a fresh rain upon my life upon my destiny <laughs> Sekete 
Jesus in the name of Jesus no matter how skillful the potter is the malleability of the clay is what determines the extent of the beautiful sculpture that will be made out of it are we together there are times that the potter would be trying to form something and because of a defect in the clay he will squeeze everything and smash it again the assignment of the clay is to trust what the potter is building are we together father in this encounter tonight change me lift me radically transform my life please lift your voice and pray don't look around pray pray I come as the clay. 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 Malleable. I come as the clay. Shapakata baroto soto prete kete. Kete peke te barakato soto bara. I bring my ministry as a clay. I bring my finances as a clay. I bring my destiny as a clay. Maker of men, make me. Maker of destinies, make me. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point and we'll sit down. Acts chapter 3 from verse 4. The Bible says how that Peter and John were on their way to go for prayer. And they met this man who was sitting by the beautiful gate. He had been there a long time. And then the Bible says, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Your own assignment is look on us. He was looking at them already. The second time we see this kind of expression in scripture, the first time was Elisha and Elijah, if you can see me. So he's not talking about just a natural looking. There is a looking that is just physical. But there is a looking that is, is a seeing in the spirit. 
an expression of hunger help them please and desperation from your spirit man verse 5 the bible says and he gave heed this is what the looking is to look does not mean to see to look means to give heed expecting to receive verse 5 broaden what verse 4 was saying so when he says look on us he's not just saying see he's saying give heed and let your spirit be ready to receive this is what elijah told elijah elijah told elijah if you can see me if you can give heed expecting to receive to look is not just to see you are already looking but to look verse 5 gave us the interpretation give heed pay attention open up your spirit expecting to receive are you ready to pray this prayer so when the bible says looking unto jesus now you know what he's saying he's not just saying just take your eyes no give heed expecting to receive are you ready to pray father i fix my eyes the eyes of my heart the eyes of my mind on you on your word i expect to receive i expect to be transformed lift your voice and pray Shabbat <laughs> shalom.